Hello Australia, welcome to another Big Couch coming your way, episode 532 on this Sunday night. Let me tell you what's on the show today. Cara Walker's coming in to talk to Peg Davies. Now Peg is from Earth Carers in WA, we'll talk to them about that. Rachel Roberts is part of Environment House here in WA. We'll find out what they do and how they got the Bendigo grant and why it's really important that the community support them. Later on, we're talking to the hosts of a great show called Darren and Brose on 1HD on Channel 10. We'll talk to them live from their studio in Melbourne. Cheryl Fisher's coming in to talk about Outback Initiatives. We'll find out all about that, empowering women. That's what that's all about. Talking music with Demelza Leonard, she's a new presenter, we'll be doing music with her. And later on we're talking complete feng shui with Michelle and Grace. Music wise we've got the WA Performance School coming in and heaps more. Stick around, it's episode 532 and it starts now. It's showtime on the couch. Yeah, it's showtime on the couch. You can see it from your house. You can watch it from your house. Very big show, very big show here on the couch. Hope you can stick around. Let's open the show today with a WA Performance School troupe and they're performing Going to the Chapel. Here they are. Going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. Going to the chapel and we're gonna I wish I could sing again. You know, last week when I did that opener, I had so many people contact me and say, never sing again. But that's okay. I'm going to. Maybe next week. There was that one or two crew members that were frightened for their jobs that said, yes, please sing again. They, they love me singing on the show, don't they? No. <laughs> 
Well, you know what? If there's no singing, I need to go to the next segment. Cara Walker is here to talk green with Peggy Davies. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Today we have Peg Davies on the couch from Mindari Regional Council, who's going to be talking about earth carers. Welcome to the couch, Peg. Thank you, Cara. So, earth carers, that sounds fantastic. I love to care for the earth. <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit what earth carers does? Well, it's quite interesting that you're actually starting from the other end. You're starting from waste. Okay. The stuff that we throw out, the stuff that we're trying to get rid of. So we kind of think in, in the council area that you need to find out where you're going, yep. uh, where your waste's going, what happens when you put it in the bins. So we've got courses that, that go for five sessions over three weeks and you go to different places to see where it goes, how it's dealt with, um, places that are community places that are actually doing things with, with different parts of waste and you learn how to deal with your own stuff. But our philosophy really is to try and keep your bins empty. So a big part of the Earth Carers course is to learn how to keep things out of the bins. That's so the reduce message rather than where well, it goes. Well, the right reduce thing. message is really hard to put in because people are just interested in throwing stuff away. And if they work out that they've got that part right, they think that they're on the money, but not really. Okay, and so waste education. I mean, if you wanted to get into caring for the earth, why wouldn't I want to go care for something fluffy like a koala? Why do you think waste is an important part of caring for the earth? Well, if we get waste right, we'll get the koalas right as well. Because we're throwing out more, be and the reason we're throwing out more is because we're producing more, and a lot of the stuff that we produce comes from a long way away. So a big part of the Earth Carers course is following the journey. And when we start to understand and appreciate that, I think then we get a broader view of other parts of looking after things too. Sure. And so when people come into this course, are they, um, are they heartbroken? Are they inspired or a bit of both? Because I can imagine it's quite, um, quite vast information that you give them. Uh, well, the course is a bit funny because you can kind of be inspired, you can be overwhelmed, you can be depressed, you can be empowered, often all at the same time. So. Yep. People come and they get lots of uh, lots of different feelings and lots of different um, outcomes from the course. A lot of them are initially they're quite interested in it, but then they realise they become very interested in it and they realise they want to do something. But it's interesting as the course is going through, they'll go home and they'll say, "This really interesting stuff happened today, and I saw this and I experienced that," and the faces will be blank. The mm. family won't care, the workmates won't care, the neighbours won't understand what you're talking about. So a lot of it is learning how to communicate what you've learned as well. So that can be at home, it can be with the person next door, can be the person at the deli, can be who you work with. So a big part of it's communication too. Yeah, sure. So not just the course, it's the ripple com of conversation that happens afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So what about um, you're talking about? You know, people have done some action afterwards. What have there been any great outcomes that have been significant? <laughs> Well, it's quite interesting because first of all, we have to look at what we do at home. Yeah. So it might be as simple as what do I do with my organics now? I might, I might not have composted before, I might not have um, even recycled before. So I might have to learn how I deal with my own stuff before I can even open my mouth to anyone else. Then I might become interested in local community organisations. Community gardens are a big deal here because the Earth Carers course is just in WA at the moment. So community gardens are a big way of dealing with waste because you generate your own soil by things that other people throw out. So you might become involved in that. You might connect to a local school, see how they can deal with their waste more effectively. So if we do it more effectively, then we often reduce what we're consuming as well. So that's an example of what people have done. Great, okay. And so what about uh, after they complete the course? Do you have anything that goes on from there afterwards? Well, when they've completed the course, they have become part of a network of people. So yeah. any events that are going on that I find out about, we obviously tell them about. So they might be community fairs or activities or school groups that um, we go and work in schools a lot. So help them set up stuff. So we ask Earth Carers to come along to that. Okay. So it's, if, like it's a volunteer opportunity once you become an Earth Carer. Yeah, well, yeah. when people get a bit of confidence and they think, yeah. oh, I don't know much stuff, but they actually know a lot. They do, yeah. As great. soon as people ask you a question, you realise how much you know. Yeah. So after people have been in earth care for a couple of years, they might be doing an advanced earth care course because initially you learn about your own waste, but then you realise that there's all these other things around you. There's all the roads and buildings that are knocked down. There's all the commercial waste from supermarkets and 
organisations out there that are throwing it out commercially. So, yep. So, and you are running a course soon, that's right? We're running an Earth Carers course in the next two weeks. There's one coming up, yes. Okay, great. So, uh, if people want more information, where would you direct them to find out some more? I would go to my local council first if you're in WA. If you're yep. um, interstate, maybe find out if they're doing a similar course somewhere. It's run by regional councils here in WA, by three regional councils. But okay. we prefer you to do it in your local area. Great, okay. So if you want more information, you can head to the Couch website, thecouch.com.au. We will have a link on there where you can find out where Mindari Regional Council has their Earth Carers course coming up. Alternatively, you can head to the Eco Ferry website. You can also find the Eco Ferry website through the Couch website on the segment guide. Thank you very much, Peg, for coming in today. I can't, I can't wait to maybe check out where you guys are in the community and see if we can talk about rubbish more in the future. <laughs> Thanks, Cara. <laughs> All right, back to you, Fred. I'm glad you didn't say let's talk crap. We'll talk about rubbish in the future. That sounds really riveting. Now, if you want to know, if you just came in at the end of that conversation, check out our website. There'll be a link there for Peg Davies from Earth Carers. And, of course, Cara's link is there as well. But if you, to do that, you need to find out how to do all this. And this is how you do it with the contact promo. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. thecouch.com.au. And please do go to our website because all the info is there as well. Okay, next guest is Rachel Roberts. She works for Environment House. Welcome to the couch, Rachel. Thank you, Fred. Firstly, tell us what Environment House is all about. Environment House was set up about 15 years ago to assist people to live more sustainably. Mm -hmm. And the focus very much, uh, very quickly became on reducing energy bills, so electricity and gas bills and water bills, um, helping people compost food waste, and we also have an eco shop, so we supply people with products, mostly locally made if we can, um, but products that assist them to live more sustainably. And whereabouts are you for people to find you? Where can they locate you? So we're in the eastern suburbs of Perth. We're located in Bayswater next to the Eric Singleton wetland, which is currently being rehabilitated, mm -hmm. which is a pretty exciting project. But we're also online, so we've got a great website, uh, we're a Facebook page, we've got newsletters. Um, and we have professional energy auditors or sustainability auditors, I should say, who drive all over the metropolitan area and visit people in their own homes. And who runs the Environment House? So we're run by um, a committee of people. We're just a ordinary people who got together and said we think we need, that people need some assistance, some expert assistance um, to live more sustainably, to access the products they need. Um, and it's so simple to do. So run us through again, for those people who have just joined us, mm -hmm. Environment House, what sort of work do you do for people? How can you help people? Okay, so we have our eco shop where we provide products that assist people. Give me an example. When, oh, when we're talking about products, I've give me a product one. that I can I've get. I've got one just here for you, Fred, oh. <laughs> which I carry around in my own handbag. Well, I thought there were sexy <laughs> knickers for a There you go. <laughs> it's a balaclava. It's a balaclava. Put it on no, your so no, something it's like a way this. Bag. Tell me what it's all about. It's what would you use It's a way use bag. For? So this is an on your way bag. Mm. We sell these at Environment House. So when you go to the shops and you want to yep. buy your apples or your mandarins or your potatoes, rather than using the plastic, than using the plastic bag, Correct. So you there can are an go alternative through the check out with those. So a good environment, in other words, looking after the environment, you can yep. use your own bag, so you basically carry that in your pocket like you, you just showed exactly. us. Exactly, yep. So stuff like that you can buy from your eco shop. Yeah, and we have what a lot else? of interesting products that people might not find elsewhere. Okay. Um, so that's what we try to do, stock products that you won't necessarily find in your supermarket. Now you're a volunteer there. I Is am. there a lot of volunteers that, that work at Environment House? Uh, we've got about 14 volunteers who put in probably about 10 hours a week each, and then we have people on the periphery who put in it time when they can. We desperately need new volunteers. Our shop is open every Saturday from 10 till 4. Is it fun? Like for those it people really watching fun. now saying, oh, I love the environment, <laughs> yeah. I might want to get involved. Yep. What sort of stuff can they do? Like what's the yep. really good stuff that they can get involved As a volunteer? In? Yep. Um, as a volunteer, um, I think the main part is that we like to have conversations. We like to do what we're doing here, sit around and talk. We look at where environment meets people and how can people actually assist uh, and that's an interesting process and a lot of it's about talking, you know, I'm having trouble with my worm farm, what yep. can I do? Yep. That's what we do at Environment House. Talk to each Talk other, to each and, other and get advice, get help. Talk to each other, get help. Talk to each other, get help. Networking. Yep. Sounds fantastic. Now, Community Bank, 
Bendigo yes. Bank, as we know it, yes. Bayswater and Naranda, they gave you yeah. guys a grant. Why is it so important that you get the support from them? We don't get any funding um, from our state or federal government anymore. We used surprise, to. Surprise, surprise. We eh? used to, <laughs> and that's gone. Uh, so now we're relying on uh, councils supplying um, funding for us to visit households, but the Bayswater and Naranda Community Bank in Bayswater has allowed us to really um, look at our own community and how we can help people in our own community and particularly in our schools. So we've been running some really good um, programs with the assistance of that funding. We are so grateful. Mm -hmm. It's very <laughs> um, important, even a small amount helps yeah, you a long Yeah, helps way. a huge way. And we help set up that branch. When all the banks left Bayswater, a lot of our volunteers actually helped set up that branch. And there's $1.5 million have gone back into our community. Fantastic. So we're pretty happy so about So Community that. Bank doing a great job yep. supporting the community as yep. they should do, and they are doing it. Yep. Tell me about your role in, in regards to sustainability as with schools, schools and yeah. uh, students. How do you help yeah. them? Um, it's been pretty exciting in schools. We've only just been trialling a process where we go in and we meet with the staff, with the students, our parents, we set up a committee um, and talk about what they want and what they need and we stay with them through the journey. So at our local primary school, Hillcrest Primary School, we went in and our, our energy auditor I believe walked you around, saved them a lot of money. Well, $15,000. How so did you do that? The auditor went around, walked around, walked he saw around, where they he were He turned power. things off. He measured how much they were using and he assisted people to turn things off. Um, it wasn't always easy, but um, through, again, talking, $15,000 a year we save them in power. And do you do this sort of stuff for other people in the community? If they we need do. your help maybe yeah. even for residential people you might be able yeah. to help them save people on People will be really surprised how much money you can save with really simple actions. So we suggest low cost solutions. They're not expensive um, and you can make big changes. And what's the next step for the school? So the next step, um, we're assisting with compost bins. Mm -hmm. uh, we've set up a raised garden, food garden, um, raised bed. Um, so I went actually and helped some students pick some vegetables the other day and you Fantastic. can forget when you do it yourself all the time that they don't do that. And so I had two boys with me and one said to the other, have you ever picked broccoli before? And one said, no. <laughs> now you and, have. Yeah, now you have, yeah. And it really is surprising. Environment yeah. House, if people want more information, what's the website? It's www.envirohouse.org.au on screen um, right now. Say it yeah. again. It's www.envirohouse.org.au. Well done. Thank you very much for coming in today. It's really important the community understands the type of work you do. They can contact you or email you yep. through your website and they can become like you and be a fantastic community-minded well, environment. Well, thank you, Fred. <laughs> saving the environment too, looking after okay. people. Saving 15 grand, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Well big, done. Good gain. Thank you for being on the show today. We'll have you back on again. And we need to take a break because after the break we're going to be talking to a couple of young guys from Melbourne doing great television. We'll talk to Darren and Bruce next on The Couch. Well done. Thank you very much. Welcome back to The Couch, right here on Foxtel on a Sunday night. Hope you're enjoying the show. Next, I've got a couple of guests in Melbourne in their studio waiting to chat to us. They are called Darren and Brose. They do a brand new show called Darren and Brose, funny enough, on Channel 1 HD on a Thursday night at about 11 o'clock. But first, check out this clip and then I'm going to talk to them live from their studio in Melbourne. Welcome to Darren and Brose. I'm Darren. And I'm Brose. Some great stuff to get through. Let's start the show. Welcome to the show, guys, and uh, you're in Melbourne in your TV studio. And thanks for being part of the couch. Thanks for having us, Fred. Thanks. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting us along. It's good fun. You're very welcome. Now, I've been watching the last three episodes of your show. It's called Darren and Bros. Tell us a little Correct. bit about your show, because I know you started on C31. Well, we made, uh, while we're at uni, we made about 100 episodes of TV for uh, Channel 31 Melbourne. Uh, sort of talk shows, variety shows, comedy shows, mixture of, uh, I guess, uh, interviews and uh, sketches mainly, bit of live music. Involving students and, you know, people that we went to uni with and um, 
and just kind of put it all together, threw it together on the fly and we did all right, we had some fun. How did you get into TV individually? Can you tell me what made you get into television? I was watching uh, Working Dog, very famous production company, made shows like The Late Show and Frontline and I noticed how they were filming their own stuff. Mm. So here you had these performers who were writing but also filming their own stuff. And so I was studying, and Bruce and I were both studying uh, media at La Trobe University, and we were effectively, we learned how to make TV. Channel 31 exists, and we thought, well, let's just make, make a show. Do you still think television on community TV plays a big part in society, or do you think that people has, uh, have moved on from it? Well, I think we won't know for a few years. I think even if you look at the our 100 shows, we trained about 250 students during that time, and a huge percentage of those people work in TV now. So in terms of what's happening in community TV at the moment, maybe five, ten years time, you'll see the results of that in media broadcasting. The, and I guess the, the way that, you know, people argue that YouTube has taken over from community TV, but that's not television, that's, no. you know, one person filming themselves doing something. Uh, and the skills that you can learn in a, in a TV studio at community TV level are not skills you can learn anywhere else. And they're skills you need if you want to go and try and get a job in commercial television. They, they expect you to turn up with some ability and, and an awareness of being in a studio. Um, and that's the important thing that I guess community TV provides. It lets people get in there and get their hands dirty and, and be aware of, of what's around them and, and aware of other people and working as a team. Uh, which you can't get that filming your own YouTube videos. Yeah, look, I tend to agree with you. I mean, from my background in television, I, I actually worked at Community Channel 31 and I was a product, you know, the people that put the shows to air. So I was never a presenter on TV. Yep. But because we saw so many crappy shows, if I can call that uh, word, uh, go to air, someone said, well, why don't you stop whinging and do your own show? So I did. I put up a, a submission to the channel. They said no. Then I said, please. And they said, OK, if you, if you beg. <laughs> and then I said, if you don't give me my show, I'll leave the volunteer position. And they had no one to fill. So I ended up getting my own, sh <laughs> my own show. You had over a barrel. The politics, <laughs> eh? You'd think it was Channel 9. But it's interesting. Like, I, we, think we, I mean, we had a similar thing. When we first went to Channel 31, we got sent away. Mm. Um, so we kind of uh, stuck out, you know, put our heads down and, and worked a bit harder and developed something else and went back 12 months later and, and, and got through. So, I mean, that's an important thing. That's a, the most important lesson in television, I think, is learning to be told no and not giving up. And, and that's where I think community TV is really important because it's, it's a training ground, yeah. but it's also a place where you can make mistakes and learn. And you look at uh, commercial television at the moment, it's been, it's been a number of years since there's been a, a, a comedy show on commercial TV because uh, usually they don't last more, longer than two or three episodes. Yes. So we're actually very lucky with, it, with our series and we've, we've lasted this many episodes so far. Tell me a little bit about 1HD. Now, you've, you guys have made the move. How did that all take place? Did, did they watch you? Did they come to you? Did you approach them? How did that all work? We've sort of been talking to 10 on and off over a number of years. Uh, more recently, I suppose, we, we, we were one of the finalists in a competition that they ran uh, as part of the uh, Screen Producers Associa Association of Australia. And that was probably the most current sort of um, dealings that we had with them. Um, due to a few issues, a few exec changes that show that we'd pitched um, didn't go into the development stage. But I guess we were sort of on the radar there. And then we, uh, we actually just decided, we, we got together with a, a few of our old Channel 31 mates one night and we were sort of talking about how it was great how we used to make these shows together. And it, all of us all work in the industry now. And there, so that conversation was happening, but also we were also talking about how there aren't any late night shows locally produced in Australia. There aren't any comedy shows on commercial TV. And so we all just thought, well, we know how to make a show. Let's just do it. So we went and shot a, um, a, a couple of episodes like as, as pilots and then went and sh um, showed Channel 10. And they said, great, let's air these. We actually thought it was probably a bit half bait to be honest, <laughs> but they seemed pretty happy with what we were doing. And I think they understand that, you know, that a lot of these broadcasters haven't really utilised their multi-channels effectively. And like what I was saying before about um, uh, commercial TV shows, uh, comedy shows in particular, not lasting more than a few episodes. Mm. I think I think some of the broadcasters are starting to realise. Well, we've got these multi channels, and let's start using them. And so we turned up at the right time with the right show, I guess. 
Fantastic. Now, talking about the right show, right time, you've got the right guests as well. I'll run you through a couple of that I've, I've seen on your shows. Julia Morris, Denise Drysdale, Stefan Dennis from Neighbours, David Rain, David O'Neill, Lawrence Lung, and many more. Mike Brady actually sang on the show on the first one that I watched. And, and since yeah. then, you've had more great guests. How do you get them? Uh, begging, pleading. Um, some of them were our friends, but aren't anymore. Uh, <laughs> you just <laughs> whatever you can do. I mean, I mean, you're in the same position, I'm sure. You, you try and approach well, as many people as you can. Well, and, I do. Uh, I mean, with, with, we were lucky with to get, success, get some. Our success is obviously because I used to threaten to walk naked around their houses, and for some reason that <laughs> turned them into television supporters. But it must be—is it a hard <laughs> thing? Because you live in Melbourne. I assume you've got more television there over there than what we have in Perth. Is it easy for when you when you contact these people? Are they they like, yep, yeah, we'd love to support you. We'd love to be on the show. Yeah, look, the guests who have who have come on have just been so generous, and I think they just. I think they're supporting the concept of a locally produced late night television show because there aren't really any that exist on commercial TV. So the idea of a, a couple of guys and a few mates getting together and trying to do something in late night, make some, make some comedy, um, mm. I think they've been really supportive of. Yeah, the generosity of the guests is, is what's got us this far and we appreciate it absolutely. So. Where to from point. here with the show, guys? Uh, where would you like to see the show go from here? I, I know it's only it's in early days on Channel One. You don't, I don't want you to say I want to move to Channel Seven. But I, what would you? What, where, would you like, where would you like the show to go from here? There's a lot of elements. It, it, it kind of depends at the moment because we're limited by you know what we have our resources essentially. Um, if we had infinite resources, then we could do a completely different show. Uh, I mean, and there are little bits and pieces that would be nice to do. But again, it just depends on what position we're in to do it. Like we'd love to have a studio audience at some point, but that's not going to happen straight away. Um, or going live, live broadcasting would be amazing. We've done that before on Channel 31. Um, at the moment, we just want to make the best possible show we can week in, week out with what we've got, and then just build on that slowly but surely um, and try and build a bit of an audience and, and work that way. We're trying to keep it organic rather than trying to force anything too soon um, that we're, we're not ready for, I guess. We've got a very small team, so yep. even just getting by what we've got to do tomorrow is quite a challenge and I, I we're also just trying to yeah we're also we're just trying to in, enjoy what we've what we've got we're, we're very lucky we've got a you know we've got a tv show on commercial television with a national audience and um i guess we're grateful for the opportunity because not many people get that chance so. exactly well, let's, let's ask you guys, uh, uh, what do you love and what do you hate? Individually, uh, Darren first, what do you love about TV? Uh, I, um... Don't say the money. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously, working with me doesn't come up at all. Um, so that, that's that's good to know that now, I suppose. Get it, get I think it. that um, it is an absolute honour to sit at the same desk at someone with someone like a Julia Morris or a Denise yeah. Drysdale, who's worked in the industry for for so many decades and won two gold logies. And these are the people that I grew up watching TV, mm. and um, it's it's an honour to have them actually come on our show and get to muck around and have fun and um, play games with them, ask them weird and crazy questions. And uh, that is a real enjoyment in itself. Yeah, the, every interview that you, you'll see on the show, there's probably 10 times as much material that's happened while the cameras aren't rolling or while we're just having a bit of a chin wag. And I mean, Darren and I are both passionate about TV. We both love television. And just the idea that we can, you know, make our own show and then get to meet these amazing people and, and be a part of that um, part of you know some part of television history is exciting so um, we actually think it's really strange because we both love um, the US Tonight shows so mm -hmm. your Fallons and um, Jimmy Kimmel's etc Letterman who just uh, who just gave Retired. it away we love those shows and yep. we think it's such it's really odd and sad that there aren't really any shows like that locally produced particularly when you think about the history of Australian television being those shows, your Graham Kennedys and mm. Don Lanes and Roves yeah. and Visards. Bert, Bert, yeah, Bert Newton. Newton as well, yeah. yeah. Is there anything you hate about television? Maybe, you, you know, the, the canteen food or the green room food or there isn't any <laughs> in our case? Well, we, we produce it ourselves, so if the canteen food's not good, it's our fault. <laughs> it's, <laughs> we had homemade biscuits on the last shoot and they were yeah. delicious. So there's a tip to catering. I only the, um, have uh, lemon sherbets and orange sherbets. That's all we get given here. No wonder I'm a diabetic. <laughs> Are you eating a sherbet now? No, Is that what you're no. doing? 
Put no, it down. I was, I was You're a diabetic. A prop. But if anyone touches prop, it, I'll, okay, I'll have their life. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, is that it's, your latest sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we can't say sponsor, can we? Mmm, sherbet. Mm. Look, at this, look at this figure. Figure it out for yourself. Delicious. The orange ones aren't as good as the lemon ones, I've just realised. So, the, <laughs> the question I need to ask you is, if you could interview anybody apart from me, who would you interview? Is there anyone left that you'd like to interview? I'm going to throw that out. We, there are, I mean, there's a couple of, like, Bert Newton we'd love to interview because we're both huge Bert Newton fans. Uh, the Working Dog guys, we've interviewed some of those. It'd be nice to interview the rest of those guys. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the guys that we've looked up to and, and, um, and that we, yeah, that are our kind of, uh, have kind of led the charge in Australian TV. So, yeah, those kind of guys would be great to interview. Darren, and you, of course, any, any with you, you, oh. you're definitely on the list. Well, I'm easy. No, I agree with Bryce. No, easy. Um, <laughs> good interview, of course. Uh, we want to get more information about the show, guys. Where do we get it? You can head to the website, darrenandbrose.com.au. Um, we're on Facebook. Look for Darren and Bros. We're on Twitter. Twitter. We're on Instagram, Darren and Bros. And, uh, and also you can watch the show. If, if, if 11 p.m. is too late for you, you can watch the show on 10 Play. 11 p.m. on a Thursday night on one or thereabouts or do what I do, set it about an hour before and an hour and after. You always get some great programming on, on Channel One. You can watch yes. the end of some Is great right? comedy films and then see us. Yep, I noticed uh, after my show on um, Foxtel's Aurora Channel is usually Blokes World and people sometimes get too much of Blokes World and not enough couch on there and they think that I've changed. <laughs> the breasts aren't mine. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Thank well, you very you much. You shouldn't finish every show with the mud wrestling, should you? Oh, uh, look, I'd love to do that as long as, um, <laughs> as long as you can get a big enough pool and somebody else. These cameras aren't wide enough for, for me in a, in a mud pool. <laughs> but thank you very much. Big thank success you, on Channel One and thanks for talking to us today. Not a problem. Thanks, thank Fred. You. Thanks for having us on your show. Great interview. Time to take a break. We'll be back with more of The Couch right after this. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television, Foxtel. Hope you can stick around. We've got a music segment coming up very soon with our new presenter, Demelza Leonard. So stay tuned for that one. But first, let's talk another community organisation doing some great work in the community, funny enough. Uh, Outback Initiatives is the name. We've had them in before. Cheryl Fisher okay. is the owner. Hello and welcome back to The Couch. Oh, nice to be back. Give us uh, just a quick, maybe 30 seconds of what Outback Initiative is all about. We provide practical leadership experience. So after you've done all the workshops and done all the theory and ticked all those boxes, you come to us and really learn what you like as a leader. Now, I asked you before, is it for females or males? And you said for anybody. Mm. So if you're out there males and you're going, ah, this is for ladies, it's <laughs> not for everybody. Any age group? Um, within reason, you have to be an adult. I mean, yep. we do do works with the Singapore Gurkhas and the police force, so it's So it's more for over 18s. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us what we're talking about today, introverts. How come yeah. we picked this topic? Why? Well, I call myself a celebrated introvert. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being an introvert and um, what I've is done an a introvert? lot of reading. Well, actually, it was, it was coined in early last century and basically it looks at introversion and extroversion as a character. So you're not either an introvert or an extrovert really. You are somewhere on a scale and we all have tendencies somewhere in the middle here. Um, some people are very comfortable being out there and put, you know, it, just talking and they're very happy with that and others like myself very, very happy just listening a lot, putting my point forward when I want to, don't like social situations as much. I actually um, call myself an omnivert, and an omnivert is someone who has introverted tendencies, but is moderately comfortable. What does society, is there a standard that society uh, tends to want people to be in? What box oh, do they have to Oh, um, absolutely. The whole society is geared towards extroverts. Absolutely. If you look at any reality show, there's always these loud people getting all the attention all of the time. So it would be yep. like my, my role here, if yeah. I was quite introvert, mm. I'm seen to maybe not doing a pretty good job. So if I was interviewing mm. you, I'd be going, so tell me, Cheryl. What's... <laughs> so we see introverts as being boring yes, and not a lot not. to say. Yeah, they actually do, but they often don't have the chance to say it because of the loud people who don't stop talking. Okay, so how yeah. can we help? The extroverts. Oh, how can we help the introverts? <laughs> okay, so... Oh, we've run out of time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, look at that. Sorry, Sean. Uh, Tell uh, us how and you're that's helping That's them. exactly what happens. Um, introverts, um, they just basically internalise what they're thinking. They take in a lot of detail, mm -hmm. so they're actually listening, and they can probably give you 
a hell of a really good answer if they were given the opportunity to speak. So politicians would be extroverts, wouldn't they? No, not really. It, it's a learned thing. It's it's where you're comfortable being. Are you more comfortable in your own skin or are you, you know, happy in a crowd? Sometimes it's a learned behaviour. Because we're always in... in the community, mm. an introvert is a person that's never given the role of presenting or a leadership role. They're usually followers. That's what mm. we perceive them as. And extroverts that's are usually the people directing the traffic, the, the front, people in yeah. charge, up the front. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, called the extrovert ideal. So how are yeah. you helping these people? What are we running for them? Are you doing some courses to yeah, help people absolutely. who think they're introverts and can't yeah. go anywhere? Well, exactly. And that's what we see all the time. We've been doing leadership programs for 22 years. And what I've seen in the last 10 years is that the introverts when they get their feedback, the feedback's almost always the same. It is, you are a very good listener, you're a very good leader, but you need to find your voice, you need to speak up, and you need to be um, assertive. Is this easy to do? If you're an no. introvert listening to this segment, going, oh, I'm too scared to ring. Yeah. Can they get the courage and can they make it? Oh, absolutely. Can introverts be seen as, as uh, successful people? Well, Bill Gates. Um, You've Richard got a list. Branson. I yeah, saw Richard your list Branson there. is an introvert. Some of these Bill Gates people, is an introvert. J.R. Rowling, uh, Rowling, Charles yeah. Darwin, yeah. Albert Einstein. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These they're, people they're, are all yeah. introverts. They're all introverts, yeah. Amazing. They just you're not going to tell me to Tesla was an introvert. It probably was. Like, she spent a lot of time fiddling about in his room. Yeah, yeah. playing yeah. around with, uh, with, with the explosions the, the, the and things. Exactly. <laughs> and you need to be a detail oriented person for that. But it's important for them to know that you don't have to pretend to be anything that you're not, that you have a lot of strengths that you just need to understand that they are strengths. You are a good listener, you're a good planner. You hear and see things that experts may not see. I've got a book here. Mm -hmm. I don't know which camera wants me to hold it up to. Tell me a little bit about this book, because this is a good guide for people, a reference. It is, it's a really, really good guide. Um, it, it's also, it's again about understanding your strengths and where you need to actually be able to step up mm -hmm. and that you don't have to be an extrovert. It's, you don't have to be that person that you're not. You are born with this trait. It's like having brown eyes. So we're basically mm -hmm. saying to people, live within the skin that you are, yeah. you can be successful, yep, you absolutely. don't have to be packaged into a box that says you're an introvert or an extrovert, just absolutely. be yourself, yep. nobody else does it better. That's exactly and right. And if they want some help to be <coughs> themselves, mm. can they come and see you? They absolutely Give can. Give us the website. Well, it's www.outbackin.com.au and we're running a Leadership for Introverts program in February out of Margaret River. Okay, and is there exciting. a cost with that one? I haven't worked that out yet, Fred. <laughs> Oh, so. she's an introvert. She's telling me what to do. I'm not going to give you all the information yet. You've done very well. So are you really you. an introvert? Yeah, I'm an omnivert. So omnivert. I'm moderately okay in social situations, but I'll go into a cave for about a week now. Fantastic. This, well, yeah. thank you very much for being on the show today. Good thank luck you. with Outback Initiatives. You're doing mm. an amazing job in the community. Please check yeah. out our website if you missed uh, Cheryl's uh, website mm. as well. Thank you very much. That's thecouch.com.au. Now, if you would like to win, if you would mm. like to win a $100 cash bonus in a bank account thanks to Bendigo Bank, Community Bank, uh, Bayswater and Naranda giving us $100 bank accounts, ultimate bank accounts. All you have to do is put the code word, which is Bendigo, it's there, see I'm having an extrovert here, Bendigo, and put your name and address on that SMS and then we will pick one and we've got $500 to give away, so we would love you to be part of it. Thanks to Community Bank, supporting the community through Bendigo Bank Australia. Thank you very much. Time now, time now to welcome our next guest. I, I want to know, are you an introvert or an extrovert I, or I omnivert? I would say probably more an omnivert, but I, there's probably a lot of people out there that know me would probably say extrovert for sure. This is Demelza Leonard, everybody. She's our new music person. Thank you for coming on. No, thank you for having me. It's, it's uh, great are to be here. Are you into music? Tell us a little bit about I Demelza. I live, breathe, eat music. Funny, funny story. When yeah. I, yeah, I eat it as well. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I, my Saturday nights, I was not very popular in high school and really? I used to spend the Saturday nights listening to all the charts and documenting every single song mm. and when it would come out and who was sung by and what lyrics it was. So That's good to know because now yes. in the future I'm going to set you some trivia questions. Oh. It'll be called Stump Demelza. <laughs> Demelza, what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to kick it all off in excess. Now they have a musical that has Never been announced. Never tear us apart. Well, yes, speaking of that oh. song. Oh, there it is. The there. Last, yes, the last, TV, like, last year they had the miniseries that mm. was 
hugely successful. Yep, Channel 9 did that. That's y good. Yes, and so Chris Murphy, the band's manager, has actually turned around and said they're doing a musical. They've teamed up with Tim Fer Ferris from the band, so you know it's going to be authentic be as well. They're just deciding on whether it would be Las Vegas, Australia, or London that they will It'll watch it. It'll be awesome it. to see this because you know I think that's probably the last thing I have to see. I've saw the Queen one that they did a while ago. Yes. Yeah. And there's been a whole heap of them, but in excess, it's going to be really good. I think it'd be good, and I'm also kind of hoping they do launch it in Australia as well. Sounds good. Yeah. So in other news, Pussycat Dolls, they are planning a reunion, so there'll be a lot of boys out there that might be a little bit happy about okay. this one. Pussycat, <laughs> Pussycat. No, that's They're not the fun. girls there. Uh, now, they, they obviously... Why do they call them the Pussycat Dolls? They were based on the popular, I think it's Las Vegas girl... Um, group or something. Yeah, like uh, dance group, yes. I yes. think it's very sexist calling them pussycats. Yes, well, but it made the quite, money, didn't it? Well, <laughs> so. enough, they're quite sexy, I suppose. We well, the that. girls have actually are in talks to reunite. Mm -hmm. They uh, had a lot of infighting coming down to 2010 due to Nicole Scherzinger, which you would have seen as the mm -hmm. lead singer in that clip just then. Uh, she wanted to go solo, and I don't think the other... Nah. Yeah, there was a lot of cat fighting. Why would you go solo when you've got so many <laughs> pussycats around you? <laughs> Dr Dre, what are they doing? Yes, hip-hop fans can rejoice after 16 years. Dr Dre has finally released his follow-up to his You'd wish he'd stayed for 17 Necrotic. years. I don't think he had no. to rush out. Well, Do you like Dr Dre? I actually am a bit of a Doesn't he make uh, headsets or something? Is yes, Beats by Dre. That is. There you go. So he's, he actually is the first hip hop artist to be considered as a billionaire. Yeah, billionaire. Billionaire. So this Compton soundtrack has been announced, uh, well, released actually. Mm. Rave reviews. It's, he's taken, for fans of Dr. Dre, he's taken his old school style and progressed it into today's music. Wow. So there's features from Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Ice Cube. And just sensational um, album, fantastic. getting Good rave reviews. So check it out if you haven't already. Now, sad news mm. in the rock music world. Yeah. Gwen Stefani from No Doubt and Gavin Rossdale from Bush have called it quits after 13 years of marriage. Why? So, well, she. there are rumours that this has been ha coming along for a while now. She couldn't handle his oh. new touring schedule and they've unfortunately parted ways. She's the one that sang that song, It's My Life. Yes, yes, and Hollaback Girl. Oh, yes. Yes. How did that Sorry. one go? Do you remember? I'm not going to try. Oh, I did. <laughs> Here I have got a bass. Nice try. <laughs> she was in a bathtub. I remember the one where she was in a bathtub singing It's My Life or something. Yes. Yeah, well, that was it's one of the No I Doubt songs. I think of the, the tune to it. Do you remember it? Yeah, nice try. Nice okay. try. Not, not quite. Not quite. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> the, the only positive out of it is they are seeking joint custody and they want to work together as much as they can oh, well for done. their three children. Well, at least there's not a big so. squabble that's going to be happening on the TV. No. Having said that, speaking of squabbles, it looks like the pop princesses are all at each other's throats really? or about to be. Why? So, Well, Rihanna has come out and said she's about to make a diss track about Taylor Swift. There's Rihanna there. So, yeah. Are you serious? Are there yes. going to be a bit of bitchiness going on? It looks like it. Well, good old Riri. More Riri. bitchiness than the cooking shows. Right? Yes. Channel 7 Very Channel much. 9. Watch your back, Tay Tay. Love because that top uh, top. Riri's best friends with Taylor, um, Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. And after Taylor did a bit of foot and mouth over Twitter aimed at Nicki Minaj, Taylor, so, um, Kate, Rihanna's turned around and said, I'm going to make a track. And it's based around the fact that she doesn't like kiss and tell women who Taylor's infamous known for her songs going out and about her past relationships. So she's a, about to make Hopefully her... they'll destroy each other because I can't stand either of them. <laughs> do, you like, do you honestly say that you listen to do Rihanna? Do you know what? I like early Rihanna. Yes. I'm not a huge fan of late Rihanna. Yeah, I'm the Beats same. are catchy. But that's about as far. Yeah. And Taylor Swift, since Shake It Off, I actually have kind of grown to like it. And I absolutely love the bad is that the one live video shake clip. It off, shake that is it the off, one, yes. Shake it, shake it. <laughs> I, saw, I see how I did it better in two seconds. I was able to be more Taylor Swift, but that's okay. And, and yeah, and basically, so expect some um, a gruesome video clip is what Rihanna oh, has said. Good. So I don't know how Do you remember years ago that guy get? that, uh, was it the girl that, that sang um, I Don't Want You Back? There was a guy, a girl that sang yes, it, and then um, the guy sang it about his girl. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's it. Yes, thank he sang you. it about his girlfriend. Yes, he had the, and then she the, had the profanity reply. riddled track that went number one, and then she followed it up. She yes. thought, oh, I better not be left and out. And funnily of this. enough, where are they are today? I don't know, but I'm expecting the whole family to come out with F you both. So <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We've had <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> yeah. Vote to cancel. Who's making it? Someone's coming over to Perth or Australia? Yes. For a few so this week, actually, if, now, do you remember uh, Pony, the song Pony in the 90s? No. Maybe. How does no. that go? No. You're not going to see that. Pony, who's <laughs> saying that? Pony, genuine. So, Does well known R&B 90s. See, everyone, oh. funnily enough, everyone's nodding. Every, yeah, everyone. Sucks so, it. if you've actually seen Magic Mike XXL, it's the song, it's one of the main songs from there. Do so. I look like I know? <laughs> Obviously, I'm probably the stunt model for it. There we go, we're playing it now. So, the, that's. That's actually, funnily enough, well, this song has re-entered the Billboard Top 5. Mm. Okay. So it came out in 1995-96, mm. re-entered the Top 5. Okay. So um, he is actually touring Australia. He starts it off with Adelaide on Thursday, does Melbourne, Broome, Perth and Sydney. So check Ticketmaster and Oz Tickets. Anything else you want to tell me about? Uh, how about we check out the Top 3? Why not? Let's have a look yes. at number three. They are as follows. Yes, coming, moving up a spot is I Galantis with Peanut Butter Jelly. It is so catchy. I do love it. I've only heard it the first time. It's about for a while. Number two. Holding it down at number two. Mm. Again, it's The Weekend with Can't Feel My Face. And number one. And for two weeks in a row, it's Lost Frequencies with Are You With Me? That's music. That is music. Thank you very much, Demel. No? You got through that very well. Great to be here. How that feel? Well, if you could, hear, if the mic could pick up my heart right now, it's like boom, boom, well, boom. Well, you did that really, really well. We'll actually record it for real now. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> well done. That is the Bills of Lena. Thank you very much for doing music so well, giving it a little bit of a, a touch of class. Oh, thank you. And thanks for joining the crew as well. Yes, great to be and here. I look forward I'm to destabilising and uh, really ruining your segment in the next Well, week. Well, give it a while. I'm going to get you to do some dancing. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, you've got hopes. Watch out. <laughs> thank you very much, Demelz. On that note, uh, I'm not being an introvert or extrovert here, but I'm being a smart man. We need to take a break. Be back with more of The Couch right after this. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to The Couch. It's been a big show today and I know, I know our next presenter, Grace, is double parked. She's got a horse and cart out the front and I'm going to get through this very quick, Grace, so you can go, okay? Thank you so much, Fred. I am here today with Michelle Castle, who is a feng shui practitioner. And today, thank you so much for coming on the show. That's all right. Um, today, you're going to be talking about Chinese astrology yes. and the year of the goat. Yes. So, I don't actually know much about feng shui. Um, so, if you could start by talking to me about what it is. And okay, feng shui is actually the art of placement of the movement of energy, which is all around you. So, whether you believe in feng shui or not, you're actually still affected by it. So, it's the chi and the energy that intrinsically moves around the environment and also within everybody and within their lives, which is Chinese astrology. So, it's all to do with energy? Yes. Okay, so you started, can you tell me about how you started, in, got into this? Um, I had somebody feng shui my house and she told me to paint a wall red and to put salt water behind the TV and hang a crystal in the middle of the house and I thought, that's a bit strange, why can't I have a red wall and why do I have to hang a crystal there? So I started researching it and enjoyed what I was learning and a few people asked me to do their house. Because um, you're an interior designer, yes. aren't you? Okay. Yeah, so I started with the interior design and it just kind of one thing followed into the other. Initially, I used to only correct houses. So your feng shui is actually the correctment uh, of a home, um, the environment and the building that you're working from. So 30% of your luck actually comes from the environment that you live in and work from. Oh. And then you have 30% which comes from your Chinese astrology, which is actually a metaphysical study, really, um, of your destiny and your luck and then you have 40% which is free will. Okay. And this is where we actually bring the feng shui in because we can actually help you. Right. So you go into people's houses and yes. they do you, can you just see that there are problems there? Um, or? Generally you can see, yeah. Um, generally you can pinpoint it. I, I usually know before I enter a home what, what I'm about to deal with and then people just have to agree with me. <laughs> so, so, sometimes you'll see something with it in a home and it takes a little while for the lady of the house to actually say, oh, how did you know that? Yeah, that is really happening. So, and you do this in the corporate world as well? Yes, corporate So business. what do you do in, in the corporate world? Um, well, you're still looking at the energy of the building. So you're still looking at um, management, placement of where everybody sits, the direction, so that you're getting the best out of your employees. Right. Um, and you can bring Chinese astrology into it as well. Oh, okay, so can you tell me a bit about Chinese, Chinese astrology? astrology? Okay, Chinese astrology is actually the information that you're given at birth. So we all think that we're one animal, so you may be a rat, 
I am the year yeah, of the rat. You were telling me you were the year of the rat. Um, so the year of the rat this year has flower of romance and harmony luck, so you oh. should be doing well. <laughs> um, but every animal has its own characteristics and its own luck per year. But we actually have four animals within our charts, not just one. So we have an animal in our year of birth, in our month, in our day, and also in the hour that we're born. So just to say that you're a rat and you've only got rat characteristics isn't correct, because you may have a little bit of a horse tendency to be a little bit frivolous or you may have a rooster in your hour pillar which would relate to your career which would mean you'd you'd slog things out you'd work really hard you wouldn't give up easily um, you may have the ox in your month pillar which actually relates to your health and your well-being emotionally and physically so the ox actually clashes with the rat this year um, and the goat so if the ox was in your month pillar then you'd have poor health Oh my gosh. So, I, yeah, so looking at your date of birth, I can tell you lots of information. So you also can tell people about their destinies and things like that as you well? You can, right? you can tap into the destiny. We tend to really deal with now. Yeah. Um, people want to ha know what's happening now in the next 12 months. Um, this is why we do the seminars and we're actually doing a middle seminar this year. Usually we only do the seminar at the beginning of the year to give people the overview of what's going to happen um, within their charts and within their luck and home for the year. But this year's been such a shocking year um, that yeah. I decided that I'd do a second one just to help people through um, and make it a little bit easier for them. This um, Speaking of this year, it's the year of the goat. goat. It is year of the goat. What does that mean? Um, well, the goat should be harmonious, um, but with the elements all lining up, it's actually caused there was um, great waterfall. There's now the volcanic ash, that's um, volcanic eruptions um, from too much earth energy in certain areas and countries. So that all affects the energy? It does, okay. yeah, of the environment and the way the elements are interacting. Um, and Western Australia, interestingly enough, we're hit quite hard this year. Um, West Australia has been classed as a West area and the West is actually hit by challenges and misfortune. So anybody that has a West facing home or if your bedroom's in the West, you're going to have more challenges than what you would normally have. Um, and to a point, this is why Western Australia is struggling a little bit more. Really? Yeah, this month we'll have a little bit of ill health as well, unfortunately. So, um, so yeah. how can, so you know all this information, but how yes. can it help people as in? Uh, okay, well, help it, you're helping people basically by giving them information and um, teaching them the correct way to sleep, different ways that they can actually balance and enhance themselves. And you can also give them trinkets and symbolisation within the home. So it does well. end up helping people. It does and help. speaking of that, you do have a seminar coming up. Yes. So can you tell us a bit about this seminar? Um, seminar's on the 29th um, of August and everybody gets their own individual Chinese astrology chart. Um, and I go through all the animals and all the different directions and pockets of your home to make sure that you can fare better for the second okay. half of the year. Right. Than what we have done for the first. And where is the seminar? Um, it'll be at Vivacious Living in Apple Cross. And that's where you're. That's where you're based. Isn't yes. It? Okay. Yes, at Vivacious Living. And what time is that on? Um, it's a Saturday morning, so it'll be 9.30 and it'll run for about three hours. And does it cost any money? Uh, yes, there, there, there is a cover charge for it, but we are actually giving away four tickets today. Oh, okay. So, um, I don't know, the first four, four callers um, can, can get a free ticket and come along. All right, well, we can put that info on our website. Um, but your, do you have a... Can you talk about your website as well? Or? Um, we do have a website, Complete Feng Shui, um, but we also have a Facebook page, which every day there's items uh, added to that and articles are written so complete feng shui at Facebook is the easiest way to find us and you can actually purchase tickets for the seminar on, on, on the complete feng shui. Okay. Uh, maybe page. those four tickets can go to the first four people that email us or something. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really great. Yeah. Cool. Um, and anyway, I think that's, uh, I'm absolutely fascinated by everything that you're saying. It's, Thank I've you. never heard of this before, so it's very new for me. Um, but if you want to find out more about that and more about Michelle and Feng Shui, Feng Shui? Feng Shui. <laughs> feng Shui. <laughs> I will get it. <laughs> then you can go to thecouch.com.au for more information. Thank you very much and back to you, friend. As always, it is always good luck being thrown to me by you, Grace. Thank you very much. Good feng shui. Thank you to Michelle Castle. Please email her and we'll give you some tickets to go and see the show that's coming up in the next week or so. That is it for the show today. We've got the WA Performance School waiting to perform for us. We've got the act. It's called Paparazzi by Lady Gaga, which is performed by them. See you next week, Australia. Cameron Lynch and more next week. We'll see you on the couch. Bye-bye.
Teacher to cry. 